Hi guys, welcome to Arteza Camp. I'm Veronica, and today we're going to draw ice cream with colored pencils. Let's get started. In day five of our camp, we're going to really celebrate summer with the season's favorite treat, the ice cream cone. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to draw ice cream working with colored pencils. Step one, sketch the ice cream cone. Using a picture of an ice cream cone for reference, I begin by using the white quartz color pencil to draw a triangle for the cone and two ovals and a curved tip for the ice cream. Step two, add details to the ice cream. Starting at the top of the tip, I draw the curving creases of the ice cream swirls. I'm careful to follow the bent edges of the ovals. By pressing on the pencil, I get darker lines I can use to highlight those edges. Once I have the swirls the way I want them, I go back over everything, making adjustments so it looks like my reference photo. Tip, don't be afraid of making mistakes. The white pencil is easily erased.
Step 3. Place the pattern on the cone. A waffle cone, like the one in my reference image, is made by wrapping a warm waffle in a cone shape. To get the look of this, I draw a diagonal line off-center on the cone. Now it's divided into two sections. Starting in the largest of the two, I draw slightly curved diagonal lines from the dividing line to the outer edge. Next, I do the same on the smaller section, only this time I place the lines in between the first ones. To form the grid pattern, I go back and draw lines in the opposite direction in both sections. Step 4. Finish the drawing. Lastly, I go over the curves and folds in the ice cream to make them stand out more. Now I erase any unnecessary lines to ensure the colored pencils are as vibrant as possible against the gray paper. Step 5. Color the ice cream. To begin the coloring process, I start with what will be the lightest areas. Since the light source is coming from the left side, I begin on that side and use sapphire yellow to color these light areas. Next, I go to the mid-tone color, lemon yellow, and I put it alongside the first layer of color.
I use orange by the lemon yellow to create a place in the curve where the light isn't as bright. As the curve diminishes, it would be even darker, so I color in that space with Fruit Punch and Plum Purple.
Step 6. Add shadows. By adding more shadowing, I can get a three-dimensional look to this drawing. I need to build them up using lilac, placed strategically next to the pink areas on the right side. I keep increasing their darkness by layering over the darkest areas with amethyst purple. I also use the shade to create the shadows where the ice cream hangs over the cone.
Step 7. Complete the ice cream. I create a beautiful gradient by adding some violet next to a few of the dark areas along the right side. Touches of sky blue add highlights in the shadows and look like reflected light under the overhang of the ice cream. I can even leave some areas without any color at all to give more lightness to the drawing. Finally, I darken the edges and detail the cream with salmon pink and pink macron and continue to reinforce the edges and highlights with white quartz.
How colorful and delicious this looks. Step eight, color the cone. For the cone, I go along the edges of it with gold, making it uneven like a real waffle cone would be. Once this is done, I go over the entire cone with a light layer of the same color. To emphasize where the folded edge of the cone wraps around the front, I go over that line with an uneven one in wine red. Using soft hatching, I use it to place a shadow under the ice cream across both sides. Hint, hatching is the technique of drawing parallel lines in the same direction, very close together. Before coloring in each little square in the grid, I want to strengthen the white lines first. The contrast between the white and the darker color of the squares will make each little wafer cell appear deeper. Once that's done, I go into each cell with copper.
Step 9. Place shadows on the cone. I add shadows to the bottom of the cone and alongside the folded edge with wine red. I also use this to color the left corner of the cells I feel would be getting the least amount of light. I darken the right side of the cone as well, and closer to the bottom, I paint those cells with burgundy. You can see how this adds so much volume and dimension. Shadows are so important. That's why I keep going back and darkening the right side of the cone with more copper, slightly working toward the center to highlight the light on the left. More burgundy details are added to the ones at the bottom as I work on the right side.
Step 10, finishing touches. Now for the last little details. I add a final highlight on my lightest areas with white quartz. I underline the edge of the cone with copper and slightly detail the cells with burgundy. To emphasize the light on the cream, I use white quartz and then darken the shadow with amethyst purple. As you can see from this lesson, colored pencils can give you some amazing results. You can create hyper-realistic drawings, imaginative cartoon illustrations, or anything in between with them. Don't be afraid to use all the colors in the set. You never know what combinations you're going to come up with. Whatever you do, I hope you'll keep experimenting with them and having fun. It's done! Doesn't this cone look delicious? Thanks for your time and for watching. Bye-bye.